Democracy. That Mubarak's gone. Kill everybody. So that's going on. Uh, it's just so over the top. U.S. backed forces, uh, European backed forces were in there a week before uh, the, the riots began months ago in Egypt to overthrow their old puppet, to get rid of the old dog, put in some new dogs. Both the major candidates now running in the elections coming up that they went ahead and suspended. But when the elections come back, our Western run publicly, again, total tyranny. It just Mubarak was not evil enough. Just like Saddam was not evil enough, uh, formerly trained in 1958 when he was an Iraqi army officer for t uh, three years in Egypt by the CIA. Uh, that's all declassified in public, got rid of him after they told him to launch wars against Iran, used al-Qaeda against the Serbs, used them against the Russians. Uh, let's put it, just Google airlift of evil. And uh, the headline will be Times of London. It was also called that in Newsweek. And they, they said, because a special forces colonel went public at the time in the San Francisco Chronicle. And he got in a lot of trouble. I remember the article. It first came out there about a month before. And then it finally came out in other publications. They said, look, we captured thousands. What was it? 8,000 Taliban al-Qaeda cream. The leaders, the Taliban general, uh, bin Laden's number two. We were ordered, you don't just load them on C-130s and take them to Pakistan. Here are chest of gold. Chest of gold, gold. There it is. MSNBC, the airlift of evil. Why did we let Pakistan pull volunteers out of Kunduz? Then you actually read the articles. It wasn't Pakistan. It was USC 130s. But see, I'm evil. I'm not for Al Qaeda. And oh, uh, it just continues here. Exclusive Al Qaeda leader dined at the Pentagon just months after 9 11. I keep going back to this. Fox News, other publications, Pentagon didn't deny it. It was just, yes, Alaki hangs out secretly at the Pentagon while he's most wanted. Let's not discuss it. And then he runs the attacks at Fort Hood and everywhere else. Just every one of the major attacks with moron patsies they hire, who are real, real mentally ill terrorists. And they, they turn these lunatics loose. And then Congress says, let us see the two years of emails and meetings and Pentagon surveillance of Alaki uh, controlling Major Hassan. And the underwear bomber and others, and they say, sorry, national security, not going to give it to you. Because according to Tarpley and his research and the evidence is there, it's not even a Lockie. It's the name a Lockie. When they're out there, you know, on message boards and meeting with them in person, I'm here from a Lockie. You've done well for Allah. Prepare the attack. And it may take them years to get them to do it. Just like 1993 World Trade Center bombing. On record, New York Times CBS News, because Ahmad Salam, the Egyptian intelligence officer hired by the CIA and FBI, he was told to build a dummy bomb. Then they said, we're going to build a real bomb. Then they said, OK, uh, now we are going to uh, give you real detonators and a real bomb. And he said, OK, let's bust them. They're about to bomb it tomorrow. And they said, no, it goes forward. He knew they were setting him up. So he recorded them and then did a press conference and released it after the bombing. And they had to admit, okay, yes, we ran the attack. And they found two men who were nearly mentally retarded because they, they, they were on welfare. They had city IQ studies because you have to go do that to get your welfare. They, they got extra welfare as being morons, mildly retarded. I think the, the, the smartest one had an 82 IQ. I mean, an 82 IQ, folks. I mean, 70 is super retarded. And they, they bombed the building. But they didn't park it up against the right column, so the feds had to get it right a few years later. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Alex has told you about the terrible, perfect storm of rising food prices. The Japanese tragedy proves how important food is. Our own gas prices are driving food costs through the roof. The huge population countries are buying up American unprotected exports of food. The falling dollar is inflating food prices. Ethanol subsidies are driving fuel and food costs to all-time highs. We are experiencing the greatest explosion of food shortages and food prices America has ever seen. Folks, you have to freeze the cost and availability of your food now. Through March 31st, eFoods Direct has free shipping on all orders. You can freeze the cost and availability of your food and have it shipped free. Call 800-409-5633 on the web eFoodsDirect.com slash Alex. Free shipping ends March 31st. 800-409-5633 on the web eFoodsDirect.com slash Alex. You may be arrested and or subject to other police action. Tyranny is here. 
The grim future foretold in 1984 has become reality. It really says that the state is God. The United States is now recognized globally as one of the most oppressive police states on Earth. This film conclusively proves the existence of a secret network of FEMA camps now being expanded nationwide. This documentary exposes how the continuity of government program has established an all-powerful shadow state. Police State 4 chronicles the sickening depths to which our republic has fallen. Prepare to enter the secretive world of emergency dictatorship. Body scanners, sound cameras, citizen spies, stage terror and cameras on every street corner. It's only the beginning of the New World Order's hellish plan. The police state isn't coming. It's here. Secure your copy today at Infowars.com or see it online in the highest quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. Hello, friends. This is Alex Jones. You've heard me talk about Calbin Five Star Soaps for years. This is an American-made product of the highest quality and compares to nothing you will find in stores. You can buy factory direct, shipped via UPS right to your door. Check them out on the web at fivestarsoap.com or call 800-340-7091. Take my word for it. Once you've used pure soap, you won't buy anything else. Since 1947, Calbin Soap Company has been showing consumers that soap can be tough on dirt and gentle on the environment. Buy American and stay clean, as well as support InfoWars. Visit 5starsoap.com today or call 1-800-340-7091. Well, Marty, what do you have to say? As founder and owner for over 63 years, satisfaction is guaranteed or double your dirt back. Call us at 1-800-340-7091 for a free catalog or visit our website, 5starsoap.com. Thank you. Love Muse, great patriots. Oh, yeah, they're on board in the fight against the New World Order. Visit their site, the only news sites they link to, Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com. They're on board in the fight. Bellamy wears Terror Storm t-shirts in concert. I need to get him back on. Got him on once. Didn't get the right number. Never been able to get him back on. But it shows how many people are awake to what's going on. Now, briefly finishing up, then we're going right to Gerald Salente, joining us via video Skype for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers, transmitting out on audio for all the great radio affiliates out there. When I'm when we're done with Salente and all this key info he has, the top trends forecaster, we're going to shift gears back to your calls in the next hour and come up in about 25, 27 minutes, and we're going to get back into publicly Al-Qaeda used against the Serbs, globalist pact, used against the Russians, uh, now, uh, it turns out, British Special Forces and others five weeks ago using them as the core to get the revolution going. Now, others have joined in, and now it's admitted all over the news. They are a, like, Leatherman tool for the New World Order, that one-size-fits-all. And they use al-Qaeda to menace the U.S. when they want to have more draconian crackdowns on our liberties and get hundreds of billions of no-bid police state body scanner and face scanner and license plate scanner federalization funds of the private corporations. But here's CBS News, random letters, and they're taking it like it's serious, 160 nuclear bombs buried by al-Qaeda. Might as well be the Keebler elves. Uh, and we better give all our rights up because 160 nukes are going to get us. Um, and you got all the White House and, and, and Democratic memos saying we need a new Oklahoma City. We need a new 9-11 to really take people's rights and make folks love it. What are we going to do? How are we going to prop up Obama? Record approval rating plunging. They think you're so dumb. They're publicly talking about how great a staged event would be. Even Beck's covered this. This is getting crazy. And I want to get into housing prices in areas that were seen as immune plunging, general housing prices plunging, commodities rocketing continually up. Bretton Woods, too, coming up next week, run by Soros at the Bretton Woods Hotel, openly calling for the end of the dollar. We're in a depression. All the economic indicators are there, but they're telling us that two plus two doesn't equal four. They're saying it equals whatever they want because, as Carl Rove said, they control reality. Well, as long as we bow down to these con artists and let them put their spell on us, they do. But the minute we realize they're pot-bellied scam artists, it's over. Now, bringing up Gerald Salente uh, to break this down and to give us his take on the war, all of it, uh, it's great to have you here with us, my friend. 
As, as we look at the war, it's what we had said it was going to be. The first great war of the 21st century has begun. And there could be no doubt about it. You said that two years ago. How did you know? Well, because the, the global Ponzi scheme is collapsing. What happened was when the bailout bubble, uh, the bailouts began in 2008, we said when the bailout bubble bursts, the next thing they'll do is take you to war. It's history repeating itself. The song is the same. The tune is different. Figure it out. 1929, the Panic of 08. The Great Depression, the greatest recession. The only reason the recession hasn't turned worse in the United States is because of all of that digital money that they keep pumping into the system to keep the banks afloat. And then you look at the currency wars going on today. Hey, guess what? They went on back then. The next thing is trade wars and then real wars. So we're looking at what's going on over in, um, in, in the Middle East and North Africa. This is also going on actually in the UK. You just saw, what, a half a million people take to the streets last week. The only difference is back in the European countries, as they're getting shafted, they're still living under the illusion that they'll be able to change it at the ballot box. They still believe in that. But over in these other countries, when you have dictatorial, autocratic, or, or monarchs ruling, they know that the only chance is to overthrow that government. And the globalists, by increasing food prices via dollar devaluation, knew the rebellions were starting, so they started the dominoes going themselves to try to put their new people in. And now in Egypt, the new government has banned all protest. What do you make of this, Gerald Salente? Fox News. Al-Qaeda leader dined at the Pentagon just months after 9-11 while he was on the most wanted list. Now Anwar al is in the news saying Arab revolts a boost for Al-Qaeda, that it's great what's happening in Libya, and the CIA-trained leader of the rebels admits the core of their troops are Al-Qaeda. So how do they have it both ways? Al-Qaeda bad, give up all your rights or they'll get you in the night. They're hiding under every bridge. They're hiding in your closet, under your bed, under your table, your coffee table. But at the same time, Al-Qaeda good. Look, am I an extremist that I don't like Al-Qaeda? Are we wrong to not like Al-Qaeda? Who is Al-Qaeda? Well, according to General Petraeus, there are only, what, a hundred of them left in, in uh, Afghanistan. And what do we got, over 100,000 troops over there? You talk about overkill. But, hey, they still can't find Osama bin Laden. No, they're going to use, you know the story, they keep using fear to keep the military-industrial complex alive. Look, I, you know, I just, I have to read this, Alex. I, unfortunately, I had to watch all of President Obama's speech the other night. Because I need to know, you know every detail that they're talking about. And it's very painful to watch this, this show on the road. But here's what he said. I've made it clear that I will never hesitate to use our military swiftly, decisively, and unilaterally when necessary to defend our people, our homeland. So, so far, that's not too bad our allies, and our core interests. Since when did this enter into the picture? So in, in effect, he's abrogated the Constitution. He's unilaterally decided that whenever he believes what a core interest is, like flourishing fields of broccoli in Libya, not their sweet crude oil, then it's a, 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 an excuse to intervene. Or our allies... What allies? Hey, how about that ally over there in Bahrain? You know, that guy that's killing his people? Don't talk about that one. Why not? Hey, couldn't be because the Fifth Fleet is there. Alex, they're getting us into war. The whys, the hows, and the ifs really don't make much of a difference because the story is going to change like that. How about this for a change of script really quick? Go back two weeks ago. Why did we get involved in Libya?